Basketball season is right around the corner. At the time I'm uploading this, the first game should be tonight. And with the crazy run we had last year and being ranked number one, I expect demand for student tickets to be even higher than usual. But I know as a freshman or if you just haven't really gone to many games before, the student section can be kind of confusing at first. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how exactly it works and how you can get the best seats for yourself in the Dean Dome. The first thing to understand is the three different types of games. First, you have non-lottery games, then you have standard lottery games, and then you have the Duke game. But before we get into what each of these mean, let's make sure you understand where exactly the student section is and how to enter. To enter, go to gate C of the Dean Dome, which is the one directly opposite of gate A, which is the stairs that you're probably going to go up to and see first. Just wrap around the corner and you'll see gate C. It's a little weird because the sections that it has on the pillar are not the actual rows for the student section, so just ignore that. But this is the gate where if you get there before gates open, this is where the line will start. And if you get there after gates open, you can go right in to the student section. <laughs> The student section is split up into risers, which are the standing only bleachers at the very bottom of the court right behind the hoop. These are the closest you'll be able to get to the court. I think they can fit around 300 people. You're going to be packed pretty tightly, but it's probably the best possible way to get the most amount of energy and hype during game because everyone's just standing and cheering the entire time. You're not allowed to bring food or drink down here and they're really strict about that and you need wristbands to be able to go down, which they'll only give to the first 300 people that want to sit there, so obviously more people can't come down later. Then the next and the most popular area of student section is section 117, which is right behind the risers. This entire section is designated for students, and it's just, you can sit anywhere until it fills up. The same goes for section 107, which is weird that it's disconnected like that, but that's how it works. Section 107 is also a student section. It's not every single row, I believe the first 10 or so rows are reserved for the opposing team's families, which I still don't get why they put our student section above them, but it's also right next to section 106, which is where the band is, so I guess that's the rationale behind it. If all three of those options are filled, then you'll probably have to go to the upper level, and I believe 211 and 210 are designated for students. Right, with that out of the way, let's talk about lotteries, phases, and the games themselves. So the non-lottery games I mentioned earlier, these are usually going to be your early in the year ones, so I think the first five or six games this year are all non-lottery and what that means is you don't have to enter a lottery to win all you have to do is show up to get C, scan your one card and you'll be good to go it'll be first come first serve so people that want risers you're gonna have to show up before gates open or a little bit after and then it'll just fill up from then on it's a 7 p.m start if you get there at like 6 50 chances are you'll probably get upper level you might be able to snag the very top of lower level but because these are mostly against teams that are not that good like james madison and gardner webb basically guaranteed wins not as many people show up to them typically and that's basically it for that the lottery games is the bulk of the games these are all of our acc opponents as well as maybe a couple non-conference like last year we had michigan and for these you're gonna have to do the same process as football go into your student ticket account about a week or two before the game is and enter the lottery and they should be notified like four or five days before the game whether you actually got a ticket now tickets will come in three phases if you got a phase one ticket that means you're allowed to enter as soon as gates open which is an hour and a half before tip-off time and this usually means you're guaranteed lower level or risers whichever one you prefer and the only way to get front row of the risers which i've done that a couple times it's a great experience but it involves waiting out in line for like at least an hour or two maybe even more before gates open for example, for the NC State game last year, it was at 2 p.m. I got in line at about 10.30, and I didn't even make it to the first row of the risers. I was in the second row. Phase two, you'll be able to enter an hour before tip-off, and you'll probably be getting the upper half of the lower level student sections. Or you can still get there early. Like, you still can get there two hours before tip-off. You just still won't be able to get in until one hour's left. But if you do that, you might have a chance at, like, the back of the risers or something, too. And then anyone in phase three can get in 30 minutes before tip-off, and if you get really lucky, you might be able to get the top of lower level, but more than likely, you're probably going to be getting upper level. And anyone that arrives within 30 minutes, regardless of what phase you are, you're probably going to be getting one of the upper level student sections. And then you have the Duke game. The Duke lottery is special in that, first of all, there's like a couple of different lotteries, some for seniors, some for underclassmen. And then you have the top 150 in Carolina Fever, who are guaranteed to be the first 150 people in the stadium and the D dome and then after that you have all of your lottery winners These Lottery winners are probably going to be seniors because seniors have priority especially the ones that haven't won before But you can still enter as a freshman if you want You just might reduce your chance of getting it as a senior if you do win and you do decide to go Obviously chances of you winning are a lot less than a typical lottery But the way it works is phase one lottery winners 
are going to be right behind the top 150 Carolina Fever and the order that they go in is going to be randomized. And the way the randomization is done, at the end of college game day, which is always in Chapel Hill on the day of the Duke game, they call a random number and that number will correspond to a wristband that you have and then you go in sequential order from then on. And for this, if you want to stay in your position in line, you're going to have to wait for at least from like, if the game starts at 6, you're probably going to have to wait in line from like 12 or 1 p.m onwards it's a it's a full day thing and the duke game also has five phases instead of three so that phase one group will be led in two and a half hours before kickoff kickoff tip off phase two will be led in two hours before tip off phase three an hour and a half phase four an hour and phase five 30 minutes phase four and five are most likely going to get upper level phase three it'll probably be split and then one and two are going to be mostly your lower level and risers and if you want some insight into how exactly that works here's my vlog I did last year of being a phase one ticket holder for that Duke game. But yeah, those are the basics of the student section. In terms of the game itself, make sure you are standing the entire time. It's the same as football. Stand the entire time except for timeouts. Be loud, be doing all the cheers. We have been petitioning for a while now to get a better located student section because as it is right now, it's disconnected and we're all together, but it doesn't feel like we can really make an impact on the game being all the way on one side. The game is being played on the opposite side half the time. Honestly, I don't think it's going to happen, so we get what we get. And we just got to be loud. And when they're on our end, trash talk your heart out. And yeah, this is going to be a ride of a six months, but I'm ready for it. It's going to be fun. And I'll see y'all in the student section of basically every single home game this year. I'm looking forward to it. Hope this helped. Let me know any other questions you have about student tickets or the student section, and I'll see you there.